the Beavers represented on Tier Dash Sports. But uh, half, I say, let's get right to this. Obviously, very big week for the Pac-12. Very big week for football in general. As we know, um, this last Thursday, yesterday, the Pac-12 CEO group voted to approve a season to start on November sixth. I'm gonna hand it right back to you, half. Do you believe this was the right decision to start a season November sixth? See, now I'm a little conflicted with the decision especially with the last week we had in the NFL with them not having any time to really prepare for the season. Um, I think that the same thing is going to happen to the Pac-12, in my opinion. I think there's going to be a lot of ener- or a lot of injuries, and I think there's going to be a lot of nerves. It's going to be tough for all the teams to really come back and get into the groove of things because if you don't have time to prepare and to practice, it's going to be tough to play, even if it's not a whole season, even if it is a seven-game season, it's still going to be tough to play and try to keep all your teams from being injury-riddled. And a lot of these guys have futures in the NFL. So getting injured now is going to be a tough thing, especially if they're trying to get into the draft. And another thing that I don't like is that I don't think the Pac-12 had as serious of a plan as a lot of the other uh, conferences did. A lot of people already had all these things figured out way earlier in the future. They know how they're going to do their testing. They know how they're going to handle the practices, how they're going to handle no fans. And I just don't think the Pac-12 gave themselves enough time to really – come out and and bring all the energy that they're going to really need to bring and all the preparations that they're going to need to have to have a successful season. Yeah. I mean, I'll uh, agree and I'll disagree with it there. I don't think it's a result because the Pac-12 didn't have enough time to make the right decision because they had just as much time as every other one of these conferences. I think what happened was they basically, they were the first conference to come out and say, we're canceling fall sports, no fall sports for 2020. And they kind of just expected everyone else was going to follow suit. They thought the SEC, the ACC, Big 12, they were all going to cancel their seasons as well. And that was not the case. And as a result, it kind of made the Pac-12 look a little foolish. And that's why I kind of believe they went back and they altered their decision. However, to address your point of injuries, well, I do believe it is a fair point. I don't believe that is a reason we should not have the season. Players still have the option to opt out and retain their eligibility. They also, if a the lead up time, the prep time is still the same as it would be for a normal season, essentially. What it would be done a non-COVID year, players report back early June, they do conditioning, and they don't get the full pad full padded practices until about a month before the season starts anyway. And if you look at that, they are basically cleared to do full pad practices starting now which is six weeks before the season starts. So it's really giving them a two extra weeks of full pads. Again, this can kind of come back. Um, it can result in some teams having the advantage, specifically when you look at a school like Colorado, University of Colorado Boulder, not being able to, not being approved by the government to practice for two weeks puts them at a disadvantage. But I don't know if the injuries are necessarily a reason we should say that they're – is not going to be a uh, reason there shouldn't be a season. Yeah, I th- I think one of the things that really got to me was that they pulled the trigger so quickly. And like you said, they thought everybody was going to follow suit and come back in and, and, and also cancel their seasons. But a lot of the major conferences decided like, heck no, we're going to play some football and we're ready. But I just don't think the Pac-12 made the right decision as being the first conference. But I also understand everybody was tiptoeing around the idea of, is there going to be football? Is there not going to be football? And the Pac-12 made their decision, but I just don't think that they made that decision at the right time. I think they pulled it a little too early. And now it's really coming back to bite them now that they've decided to rescind that idea so late in time. Let me ask you this, Hef. I kind of analyzed the decision whether student athletes who aren't being paid should play sports. And when I'm looking at it, are these three things. The first is health, and we've kind of covered it related to injuries. That's one thing. Are they doing enough to protect the players from having future injuries that are going to set them back for the career? You are saying you don't think the Pac-12 is doing an adequate job of that. I disagree with you on that. But I think another big aspect of this decision is are they going to um, do this in a way that is safe and doesn't result in huge spreads of the coronavirus? What do you think about that? Do you think this is from purely – a coronavirus standpoint, obviously neither of us are scientists and we don't know, we're not experts on this, but purely looking at it from that, do you think it is irresponsible to be having football while this virus is still affluent in our nation? 
I, I don't. I think that um, the way that the NBA is doing it with the bubble, I think the way that the NFL is doing it with their constant testing and their constant monitoring over everything, I think that if, if the Pac-12 and every other conference in college football takes notes, actually looks into what they need to do, does the research, I think that they'll be able to keep everything under control. Mm-hmm. Especially, it's tougher when it comes to college football because – while these these athletes are athletes, they're also students, mm-hmm. and they have to. It, maybe even if they're not having in person classes, they're still students, and they're going to be around a lot of people on campus. So it's if you can keep those players from going out and doing things that would you know jeopardize not only our team season but also the whole Pac-12 season yeah. and the same thing with other schools. And that's exactly how it was in the in the bubble and the same thing with the NFL. These players are on constant monitor, not allowed mm-hmm. to leave, not allowed to go out and party yeah. and have have you know social gatherings and stuff like that so as long as they keep everything in check i think that everything's going to be fine yeah and no i'm right there with you honestly like i said i'm not an expert when it comes to how viruses are spread or whatever but one thing i would say i am fairly i have a good amount of expertise in is how college students behave and i know for a fact that if there was not going to be constant testing and if the football players or whatever sport it may be did not have the responsibility of their team to their team and remain safe do adequate social distancing pre- practices, whatever. I believe there'll probably be more virus being spread because if you're not playing a sport, you're not having that constant testing, you don't need to stay healthy for, you don't have as much of a reason to stay healthy, you're probably gonna be more likely to go out with your friends and whatnot. So from a standpoint of the coronavirus, it seems like we're on the same page. Um, and that kind of brings me to my final point. The uh, health aspects of starting the season, we've kind of covered. But I want to ask, do you think seven uh, seven games was the right amount? I don't, just because that's one of the lowest, if not the lowest, amount of games to be played by any college football team this year with the Pac-12. And I, I think that that really jeopardizes the chances of any Pac-12 team making it to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there is clear-cut favorites in the Pac-12, especially with Oregon. Um. But I mean, a team's gonna have to go seven and zero. Yeah, and that's gonna be the toughest thing for any team to go seven and zero to even get a look, a sneak peek, or a consideration into how this is even gonna happen. Um, I think it's gonna be tough, but I, I don't know if it jeopardizes the season. I mean, it's getting guys out there, it's getting guys playing football, mm-hmm. and I think that that's gonna be like the best thing for them. But I, I don't know if seven games was yeah. enough. I see a 